In this video, we'll talk broadly about the idea of mathematical modeling and how it comes into use across a variety of science and engineering type fields. So mathematical modeling is really the main idea behind studying and learning about differential equations if you're going into a science or engineering type field. You want to be able to use differential equations to model physical problems and then use the solutions of those differential equations to help you analyze the physical problem that you're trying to look at. So there's sort of three main steps in the process of mathematical modeling of differential equations. The first of those is to come up with some sort of model, some sort of equation, that is going to model what's going to happen in the physical system. This really comes from physical principles or science equations that we know and want to use that to then put together a differential equation that models this physical system. This can also come from things like the accumulation equation as the basis for writing this differential equation that's going to model this physical system. We've taken our physical system that we want to understand something about, and we have used physics or chemistry or biology, any kind of basic principles, to write some sort of differential equation that should model, should represent what's going on in this physical system. Now we want to actually solve the differential equation that we wrote. And that's where this class comes into play. The idea of now that I have this differential equation that models the system, I want to solve it and get a function that describes how the system is going to behave over time. This process also involves being able to interpret the results you get from the differential equation solution in the context of the physical system you started with. There are certain questions you want to ask about the physical system. How is it represented in terms of the mathematical solution to the differential equation? And how can you take your solution and interpret it to get to the answer you want to actually get to? And a final component of this modeling process is refining the model, or more directly, testing the model against physical data. So the point is, you've written this differential equation to say what's going on in this physical system. You can solve the differential equation, and you can run the system. And then you want to compare the two to make sure they line up in a nice way. Right? If the model you write doesn't actually match the reality of this system, then it's probably not a great model. If it matches, then great, you've got a basic model that could work for this system. Now you can go on to use this to try to solve other types of problems now that you know this model actually works. So on a wide scale, that's the process towards making and refining a mathematical model that can be used for a physical system. How are these things useful? There's two main reasons that come to mind as to why these are really useful ideas. The first is in optimal system design. The idea here is basically I want a certain physical system to perform as well as possible for some definition of well, usually a minimization of cost or something like that. And what these models allow us to do is write a differential equation to model this system, and then we can figure out what can I do to make this differential equation give me the best solution I could possibly get out of the physical system. So I can do my tinkering on the model part, the differential equation part, which is easy and doesn't cost any money, and then I can try to implement it in a physical model to see if it works. And you might be able to, from the differential equation, get an exact value for what set needs to look like to be as good as possible, and then see what happens when you actually implement it. Sort of parallel to this is the idea of, with a model, you can do fewer physical experiments. All the tinkering to find this optimal design mentioned above could just be done in the physical model. But then you're running this experiment over and over and over again to try to figure out what the best arrangement of parameters is to make it work. However, that has a pretty big cost associated to it. This costs time because these frames might take a while to run in the real world, but in the model I can write the solution right away and get the answer very, very quickly. It could cost money just because you have to run this over and over again. It can cost materials. There are a lot of things that sort of get eaten up when you run an experiment over and over and over again. And yes, there is a point at the end of this for actually running it on the physical model to make sure it works, but the interim sort of experiments to get you closer and closer to this better solution, you might be better off just running those with a model, which just runs on computer time, doesn't cost that much money or materials, and can get you towards what the optimal one should be, then once you get the actual system you want to try to run, then run that one with a physical model and make sure it actually works the way it should. So that's really the idea. Having the ability to take a physical system write a model for it, and run tests there, allow you to do less physical experiments, which will cost less money, and allow you to sort of more quickly get to the best outcome for the, model, for the system you're trying to work with. That's really the big picture of modeling, what it is, and why it's useful 
in science and engineering type fields.